Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying he is one, and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God, and no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in this passage of Scripture, of course, we have one of the scribes. The scribes are the teachers of the law. These are the ones that teach and enforce uh, the laws of God. Uh, They are the ones that instruct the people on how to conform their lives to the teachings of uh, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, which not only contain uh, 613 laws, uh, but also the scribes add to that many other laws that they have assembled, not in the Torah, but outside of the Torah, outside of the first five books of the Bible, uh, the law of God. But those additional laws are there erected to protect you from violating any of the laws that are written in the scriptures. So they have a lot of things to teach, a lot of little what I call fence laws. It's kind of been called that for a number of years. Fence laws, they are laws that keep you from coming outside of the fences and and violating God's law. So for, uh, for Jesus, this guy is a stickler. He is looking for a specific answer. And this is an answer to a question that has been asked for centuries. Rabbis, scribes, uh, Sanhedrin, leaders of the Jews, a lot of uh, Jewish uh, people had asked the question of all the laws, of all of the 613 laws that are found in the Old Testament, which one is the greatest, which one is the most important which is the first. And they keep arguing back and forth as to what that one might be. And so this scribe is actually asking Jesus a very honest question, a very forthright question, and one that is a valid question to ask a rabbi. What's your understanding of this? Which commandment would you say? So Jesus replied in two unique ways. Number one, he gave the greatest law using two laws, but made it so that they both worked together very beautifully. So he says, the first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Now, this basically is taken right out of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. It's called the Hebrew Shema. Shema, O Israel, hear, O Israel. The Shema prayer is a prayer that was prayed at least twice a day by the Jews. They also took it and wore it in little leather pouches on the forehand and on the forehead uh, as a reminder that this is how uh, they needed to live their lives. And the reason they did that is that at the end of the Hebrew Shema, one of the things that Moses puts on there, you shall wear this law as a frontlet for your hands and uh, your mind. Basically, uh, they were doing literally what Moses was asking them to do 
realistically to actually take and implement this in their minds, hearts, souls, and with their strength. That that, that should encompass everything. But then Jesus adds, love your neighbor as yourself. So that what you end up with is a vertical and a horizontal relationship with God, which is critically important. The one with God going vertically, the horizontal relationship, how God wants us to live with one another. And at, at this point, uh, the scribe says, well said, teacher. In other words, he was really excited and astounded by the answer. He re basically repeats it uh, in his own words. He summarizes it. And then he says something interesting. He says, this is worth more than all of the burnt offerings and sacrifices. At the time of this conversation, Jesus is at the temple in Jerusalem. He has just come through uh, the triumphal entry. Coming into Jerusalem on the, the feast of the Passover a few days ahead of time, one of the things that they are experiencing is a tumult of people, uh, a huge influx of people into the city of Jerusalem, and they are there for a significant purpose and a singular purpose, to offer sacrifices on Passover. <clears throat> so here we have a teacher saying that what is going on right now in the temple, what's going on during Passover, that what you're saying is worth more than what everybody is going to do here this weekend. All of these sacrifices, offering all of this up to God, is not worth what you just said. What a powerful, powerful message back to Jesus. This scribe really gets it. And as Jesus said, you're not far from the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. To us today, this is a very common thing for us to think about. The, 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 the summary of the law or uh, the greatest commandment, we hear it a lot. Uh, you know, uh, to love the Lord your God with their heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself. And that becomes a very commonplace. To the people of that day, this was truly unique. And it is, in fact, all-encompassing. It, it takes in every single part of our life. Our heart is the very core of our being. Our soul <clears throat> is our mind, our will, and emotions. Then Jesus singles out the mind— it wasn't in the Hebrew Shema originally, but <clears throat> that there has to be that mental ascent and with our strength, that what we do during the day, we, we do to the glory of God. <clears throat> and then he adds, loving your neighbor as yourself, that <clears throat> the first commandments are nullified if we are not doing the second. The second commandment is nullified if we're not doing the first. Both of them live together in the same truth that God wants us to live a life of love as we love him and love one another. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. One of the things that I might uh, just suggest to you is that uh, this passage in a particular, the, uh, the greatest commandment, is a great place to go when you're doing an examination of conscience for confession. You know, are there ways in which your love for God is not a part of your heart, is not a part of your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, is not a part of your daily life? Those are things that you could look at. Also, how about loving your neighbor as yourself? Um, are you really engaging with your neighbor in such a way that you are showing the same love relationship that you, you have for yourself. So a good way for us to go to confession using this great summary of the law of God. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.